just what it should be so. In every tribulation, this time must bring to view. Oh Lord, we need a friend like you. Oh Lord, we need a savior friend. On this weary road, we need someone to guide us and share us. Jesus is the best friend we can ever have. We thank God for a morning like this, for another opportunity to be in the presence of God. Um, we want to thank him that he's been here before we ever got here. And we also want to express our thanks and appreciation to um, the choir and orchestra. First, um, we had that um, piano voluntary by Brother Godwin, and then we had the orchestration, Heavenly Sunlight, um, by our orchestra. Then we, the choir sang Victory, hooked on favorites. And then we had that beautiful quartet on, Oh Lord, we need a friend like you. We want to pray that God will continue to bless and strengthen our choir and orchestra. Um, once again, you are all welcome. And we also want to extend our appreciation to our internet audience, those that might be um, watching us wherever they are located all over the world. This is Apostolic Faith Church in the UK. Um, we are located at number um, 15, Penhill Road, on, um, and that's in Bexley, DA53 EP. Uh, if you live locally, we will be glad to have you to come around and work out, I mean, um, worship with us um, because we are sure that God will bless you. And um, if you don't live close by, if you're visiting any time, we'll be happy that you please come around and spend some time <laughs> with us. And God will bless you, certainly, as you do so. It's our turn now to sing, and where Brother Michael Wolabi is going to lead us in our congregational singing. God bless you. <coughs> One nine four. We begin with CGS one nine four. Come, thou fount of every blessing. Amen. May God, the fount of blessing, may come down with us Amen. and bless us today. Amen. 
the Son, the God the Holy Ghost. Lord Jesus, we are here this morning, gathered to worship you, gathered to hear from you. Come down and be with us, my Lord. Come down and meet our expectation. Come down and hear our petition. Lord, we look up to you this morning with diverse situations. Oh, some have financial difficulties, some of us have job difficulties, some of us have some children difficulties, some have sicknesses, Lord. We all come in faith believing that when we present all this before thee, you will hear from heaven. You will hearken unto our Christ. Lord, we plead you this, with you this morning. Answer all our prayers. The ones we can share with our friends and the ones we cannot share. The ones we, can, we, we are embarrassed by them to share. Lord, come down and hear our prayer. Come down and answer. Amen. We plead for your mercy. We still believe that as the blood that is still oozing from Emmanuel's vein, we still believe that he still has power to save. He still has power to deliver. He still has made power to make a difference in our life. Lord, we plead that you apply that in our hearts. Make a difference in our life, Lord. We put the rest of the service in thy hands, Lord. Bless the preacher this morning. Bless our altar service and send us all home rejoicing. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. scripture reading this morning is taken from the book of 1st Kings chapter 18 verses 41 to 46. 1st Kings chapter 18 verse 41 to 46. 41. And Elijah said unto Ahab, get thee up, eat and drink, for there is, an ab there is a sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel. And he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. And he said to his servant, go up now, look toward the sea. And he went and looked 
And he went up and looked and said, there is nothing. And he said, go again seven times, 44. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. And he said, go up, say unto Ahab, prepare thy chariot and get thee down and the rain that the rain stop thee not. 45. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind and there was a great rain. And Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. 46. And the hand of the Lord was on Elijah. And he guarded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Ere you left your room this morning, did you think to pray in the name of Christ our Savior? Did you see for love in a shield today. Oh, I pray a rest the weary. Pray I wait in the night today. So, when life seems dark and dreary, don't Forget to pray. When you met with great temptation, did you think to pray by his dying love and merit did you claim the Holy Spirit as your guide and stay oh I pray and rest the weary prayer we change the night today. So when life seems dark and dreary, don't forget to pray. When so trials came upon you, did you think to pray? When your soul was bowed in sorrow, balm of Gilead did you borrow at the gates today. Oh, I pray, rest the weary. Pray, we change the night today. So, when life seems the country, read on, forget to pray. Oh, I pray, raise the weary. Pray, we change the night today. So, when life seems dark on Don't forget.
forget to pray. I take my opening text from the <clears throat> Gospel according to St. John, chapter 16. And I'll be reading from verse 23 to verse 27. The gospel according to St. John, chapter 16, from verse 23 to verse 27. John 16, from 23 to 27. 23. <clears throat> and in that day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Amen. He that oh, have ye asked nothing in my name, ask and ye shall receive, Amen. that your joy may be full. Amen. 25. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs, but the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly of the Father. At that time, you shall ask in my name. And I said not unto you that I will pray the Father for you. For the Father himself loveth you, because ye have loved me, and have believed that I came out from God. Um, this morning, the, um, what we're looking at is dig a little deeper. Amen. Dig a little deeper. Amen. That's what we're looking at this morning. Um, here, uh, dear Lord Jesus Christ, as he was gradually rounding up his earthly ministry, deemed it fit to leave some hard facts with the disciples, certain things that they needed to know. Um, Jesus had been around with them for the space of about three years. And now he was rounding up his ministry. He was going to be crucified. Before now, if the disciples had an issue, they needed not to pray. All they would do was to run to the Lord Jesus Christ. When they were in the ship and the, um, the sea became um, turbulent, they didn't have to begin to pray to God. All they did was to go to Jesus Christ where he was sleeping and they tapped him, and, Lord, carry thou not that we perish. And Jesus stood up and rebuked the wind. Now Jesus knew that after his death, the disciples were not going to have the privilege of having him physically present with them anymore. Jesus knew that the time was coming now when the disciples would have to agonize in prayers when they will have to pray to God. He said to them that he thought, oh, have you not asked anything in my name? Up and until that moment, they needed not to pray, um, not to even talk of praying in Jesus' name. They would just go to the Lord and they would get whatever they needed. But that time was soon approaching that they would need to pray. And Jesus told them, but these things have I told you. That when the time shall come, you may remember that I told you of them. In verse 25 of that same chapter, Jesus said, These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs. But when it comes to verse 29, after Jesus told them of the need for them to spend time in prayers so that Whatever need they had, they could take to God, and they would have to ask in his name. The disciples had this to say in verse 29. His disciples said unto him, Lo, now speakest thou plainly, and speakest no proverb. Now we are hearing the hard facts. You are no longer speaking to us in proverbs now. You know, Jesus told them, these things are spoken to you in proverbs, but the time is coming when I will not have to speak to you in Proverbs. So this was the time, and the disciples recognized it and acknowledged it as such. Brethren, this is the time to pray. 
if there was any time that we needed to spend time on our knees before God in prayers, I think this is the time. Um, look around you, and you will know that things are fast changing. Um, not just in the world generally, but even in the Christendom. You know, I used to say, when um, my, in my first year in the university, I went to a Christian fellowship called Evangelical Christian Union in the University of Ife in Nigeria. Um, we pride ourselves then to be the biggest campus um, Christian fellowship, maybe if not in the whole world, maybe in Africa at least. It was quite a big organization. And I remember that those days, um, if a meeting, the fellowship was to start maybe at 6 p.m., when you, if you got to the center at about quarter to six or even 5.30, you'll be wondering if the meeting had started already because people will have gathered and they will have been praying, soaking the place in prayers. In fact, I remember one of our leaders said then that ever since he started coming to this fellowship that he had never been early enough for any meeting, not because he was always coming late, but it was because every time he felt I will be there early today, I will probably be the first person to get there. But he will get there and meet a lot of people already on their knees, praying to God. Um, check, we don't need to go far. Let us look inwards and ask ourselves, is this still the same today? Still talking about that same um, fellowship that I attended then, I remember then that if we saw somebody, particularly ladies, permit me, I'm not um, picking on ladies, it's just that it's always easier to, 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 to pick on them, um, well, yeah, just to, it's quite easy to recognize when they dress like Christians and not. Men can always cover up things, so I'm not just picking on ladies. It was very, very rare those days to find a lady in our midst in the fellowship that wouldn't dress properly as a Christian. And I'm talking of from head to toe, including their hairdo. Um, if you saw one that had a different hairstyle, you will know immediately that this person is a newcomer to the fellowship. And we will do our best to follow up um, I, such a person, by the grace of God then, I was a teacher in the Converse class, so people that came newly to the fellowship, we, we had a separate Bible study for them, and by God's grace, I was one of the teachers there. So we immediately recognized that this person was new. But after a while, things began to happen in the fellowship. And the, other, the opposite became the, the, the situation of the fellowship such that if you saw anyone, any lady in particular, that came to the fellowship and she dressed like proper Christian, you will expect a proper Christian to dress, you will know that that person was new in the fellowship because things had turned upside down. Um, without um, apportioning blame, somehow, I guess, we all got careless and the enemy sneaked in to our uh, midst, and um, strange things began to happen. I did say that if there is any time, if there was any time to pray, now is the time. And I, I challenged us to look inwards. You can ask yourself, not any other person, um, whether the zeal that you had for the Lord when you first believed is still there today. Um, you can ask yourself if the commitment that you had for the Lord when you newly gave your heart to Jesus Christ is still there today. And I'm not just talking about the zeal of coming to the house of God or of making yourself available to be used of God, but as it affects you from head to toe, can you um, boldly stand before God and say, yes, I thank God that God has helped me to keep the standard, um, that what the Lord did in my life those days, um, 
the testimony that I had when I newly became a Christian, that that testimony is still there today, that is still constant. You can, every one of us is um, best placed to answer the question inwardly. Brethren, the truth is that, um, unfortunately, as the world is changing, we as Christians also seem to be changing with the world. But we thank God that the word of God is constant. Amen. The word of God does not change. Amen. The standard of God does not change. Um, the fact that many people do it, and it looks like it is the norm now, it is now acceptable, does not mean that God approves of it. So if you get led by your nose, just by saying that, oh yeah, so and so person does it, and this, this, this and that, they do it, um, and things seem to be going on well, and because of that, you fall into the error that those people have fallen into, you only have yourself to blame. Because when Jesus comes, he's not going to say, oh, because we live in a different century now, and things are different, um, therefore, I have lowered the standard, and I can understand. Um, so uh, the standard I use for those that lived um, ages past, I will lower that when it comes to looking at your case. It's not going to be so with the Lord God. Um, God is not a man. Human beings and governments can change their laws. Um, things that they once condemned, they can reverse the law now and say it was actually a mistake. And then they will begin to pardon people that were then condemned for doing those things and say, we made a mistake. But you see, for God, God that said to Abraham, Abraham, walk before me and be ye perfect. is the same God. His standard hasn't changed. He still wants us, male and female, to walk before him and be perfect. But I want to tell you, that it requires more than the words of mouth to be able to take your stand yeah. and say that, well, this is where the Lord has put me, yeah. and that is where I am going to remain. Yeah. I may be the odd person out. I don't really care. Others may do it, but I won't do it. I will stand with the Lord. Yeah. It takes more than the words of the mouth. It takes a lot of prayers. Yeah. Because the devil will come around. He will challenge you. He will tell you, look at it. How many of you are still left? How many of you? You look around. How many people still dress the way you are dressing? How many people still pray the way you are praying? How many people are still early to church the way you are early? Things are changing. You need to change also. The devil will come. He will whisper that to your ears. But if you are a prayerful person, you can tell the enemy, Satan, get you behind me. And he will flee. And if you are here this morning, if you have compromised in any way, and you know it. Don't wait until somebody approaches you to tell you. And you know it. I tell you, if you need to get back properly with the Lord this morning, you need time in prayers. You need time in prayers. And you need to be decided that by the grace of God, I will stand for God. Joseph was alone in Egypt. He didn't have a brother. He didn't have a sister. Um, I, I can almost say he didn't have the Torah with him to read that will remind him the things that his father taught him at home. But Joseph remembered those things. That was why when Potiphar's wife got hold of his clothes, compelling him, asking him to please sleep with her, Joseph could leave the clothes with the woman and run for his life. And he said, for me to do this and sin against God, no, I will not do it. For some other people, that would be the easiest thing to do. But thank God that we have men like that who lived that kind of life and their record is there. The Bible tells us that these things happen to them for our own examples. They are written so that we can see and know that there are people that once lived before us as Christians. The Christians in Antioch, the disciples of Jesus Christ, they didn't have a label of Christian or Christianity on their forehead. But when the people saw them, they knew that these people are different. They must be followers of Jesus Christ. I don't know if that can still be said of you today. Our Sunday school teacher said this morning that you don't have to tell them at, at, at your workplace that you are a Christian before they will know it is by your attitude. And I dare say that even by your dressing, they, they can recognize that, yes, you are different from them. But you see, for you to be able to uphold that standard, 
you need to be a man or a woman of prayer. And this uh, month of January presents a wonderful opportunity for us to come together and pray to the Lord. The time to pray is now. You have the energy. You have all that is required. It is quite easy to excuse ourselves that we don't have the time. But um, somebody sent a WhatsApp uh, message to me during the week, and I had seen that before, who said, I think he said um, he lost somebody, and then he approached his boss to say he would not be able to come to work because so-and-so thing happened to his sister. And the boss said, if you are absent, who is going to do your job? We need you to come around. Who will do all the fighting? Who will do everything? And then he said, at some point later, one of his colleagues died in the office. And you know the office, the manager wouldn't go around and be asking, how would this work continue? What they would do is they would immediately fill the vacancy. So if you think it's your time, of course God understands. But you know, sometimes when we tick ourselves right, God ticks us wrong. And it is the tick that God gives that is important. So let's do our best. Let us sacrifice the time. It is not easy. Jesus never promised us that this journey will be an easy one. It's going to be a very challenging one. But because we have all signed up to be followers of Jesus Christ, we must be determined to give all that it demands. When you work hard in your early years, what do you do? You save. You um, contribute to your pension. Why are you doing that? You are doing that for the raining day. Because a time is coming when you will want to go to that workplace, but you won't have the energy anymore. You will want to get up very early in the morning. The alarm will ring, you will stop it. You say, I'll sleep five more minutes. It will ring again, you will stop it. And then you just realize that it's no longer the same. Um, you know, our strength does fail us with age. I'm, I'm still a young man, but I can tell you that I found out something. Before now, if I was going, um, say, in Lon um, if I was uh, at London Bridge and I needed to either descend or go up the escalator, I would run, particularly if I needed to climb up. In fact, sometimes I would avoid the escalator and use the staircase, and I would run through. But I found lately that... Um, Sometimes, as, I, as I'm approaching the escalator, I just say to myself, take it easy, young man. Just stand on one side. And then when the escalator is almost getting to the end, I will step out and then walk through the rest. I, what am I saying is that our strength is not going to remain the same forever. It will diminish at some point. So now we have the energy. We have all that it takes to make sure that we bank some prayers. This is the time to pay to your spiritual pension fund so that when the time comes, you won't have to struggle to draw from it. If you invest in prayers now, you will not only reap the result this year, but this result you can reap till eternity. And you just never can tell when there will be need for you to draw from it. Jesus said that we should ask so that, that we will receive, so that our joy may be full. It is the desire of the Lord that our joy be full in him at all times. That you look at yourself in the mirror and you say, praise God. I might not have money, but I thank God I have Jesus Christ. I thank God that as I am stepping out this morning, the glory of the Lord covers me. Not in terms of artificial beauty, but in terms of the beauty of the Lord himself. You can pray that prayer, and God will cover you with his glory. Except your joy is already full, then you might not find the time and see the need to pray. But if your joy is not full yet, you need to pray. Jesus told Peter in John chapter 21 verse 18 that a time will come that you, he wouldn't even be able to wear his clothes. They would have to stretch him to put clothes on him and that they would carry him to where he didn't even like. That time is coming for all of us. I think it was Friday when Sister Florence was leading prayer here 
And she started mentioning the names of our elders. Fathers that we haven't seen in the church for a very long time. Not because they are no longer members of the church, but because their strength has failed them. They have got to that age. You and I, we get to that age, except Jesus comes before then. So now is the time. Before people begin to carry you to where you don't want, before they have to ask you to stretch your hand or even help you to stretch it, to put clothes on, now that you can do all of those things yourself and come to the house of God, you better do it and spend time in prayers. The place we read in 1 Kings chapter 18, 1 Kings chapter 18, from verse 43, it's a story that we are all familiar with. It's the story of Elijah. The Bible tells us in James chapter 5, verses 17 and 18, that Elijah was a man of like passion as we are, but that Elijah prayed and the heavens ceased. There was no rain for the space of three years and six months. And then the Bible says in verse 18 that he prayed again and it rained. This is where Elijah spent time in that prayer. The place we read in 1 Kings chapter 18 from verse 43. He said, And Elijah said unto his servant, Say, Go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. At this time, I am sure Elijah had spent some time in prayer. And Elijah had an expectation. The expectation of Elijah was that the drought was over. Yes, I logged the heavens for it not to rain. But now it is time for me to open it again. And for that to happen, I will need to pray. So Elijah had the result he was expecting. So he told the servant, go and check. The servant went and came back and said, there is nothing. For some people, that would be enough to discourage them from praying any further. They say, well, God is not answering prayers. Maybe you have a particular problem in your life, and you've been crying to God for it. It could be that this is the time that God is going to solve that problem. But if you withdraw and say, well, I have been praying over the years, and nothing has happened, then you will be denying yourself and robbing yourself of the opportunity of praising God for an answered prayer. And so Elijah told his servant again to go. He said, go seven times. So we can say that Elijah's servant had to go and do um, the observation eight times. The first time he went and came back and said there was nothing. So Elijah said, go seven times. And each time he was going, I'm sure Elijah remained on his knees. The Bible tells us that his face was between his knees. He was bent down, praying unto God. Don't forget, it was God that told him where Elijah was. God said, go and show yourself to Ahab. There must have been some discussions between Elijah and God. That God would have told him, okay, at your command, I will ask rains to come now. So, but go and show yourself to Elijah, I mean to Ahab. Yet, the same Elijah was praying to the same God with whom he had a conversation earlier on. And nothing seemed to be happening. But we praise God for Elijah. He wasn't a man that would take no for an answer. He importuned in prayers. He remained there until the servant came back and said in verse 45, and it came to pass in the meantime, um, no, not, not verse 45. Yeah, verse 44. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea, like a man's hand. That was all Elijah needed. He knew the prayer had been answered. Job done. It's time now to go. He said, go and tell Ahab very quickly. He should mount his ass and begin to run so that the rain will not beat him. May God give us more Elijahs. May God make you and I Elijahs so that we will importune in prayers and say, we will ask until we receive. Some people call that push. They say, pray until something happens. We need to be able to pray until something happens. Don't take no for an answer. For so long as we are sure that this is the will of God, 
You know, God might have told you that he, you will be promoted in your place of work. But for some reason, that promotion is getting delayed. It's getting delayed. Somebody suddenly decides to stand on your way. You can, you can take that issue to God in prayers. You are not going to ask for that person to die. Christians don't pray that there are people that oppose them should die. That, that is not a Christian attitude. Yeah. Jesus told us to pray for our enemies. Yeah. So even when that person is rising up against you in the office, you can go to God and ask God to fight your cause. Yeah. And say, God, you promised me I will get this promotion. But it is being delayed. Lord, please help me. Bring the promotion. And as we pray to God, God will hear an answer. Amen. God is sovereign. Yeah. He will do what he has to do. God said he will give us um, the riches that are in dark places. That is riches that people never knew were there. That he will give us. But it takes prayer to get such from God. I don't know how many hours you spend on your knees privately at home. I can almost say that we pray, we, it, when we come and we pray corporately for an average Christian, if you are like me, that is actually the time that one can spend more time in prayer than you say you want to pray privately at home. At home, as you come back from work, your wife come, your, your spouse comes back, and he or she begins to tell you about what happened at work today. Meanwhile, you are tired yourself. And you are thinking about going again tomorrow morning. Then you are thinking, well, what, what will I take to work tomorrow? If you, if you take lunch like I do, God bless my wife, who always makes that ready for me. You are thinking, what are we cooking? What shall I take tomorrow? And then you are also thinking, oh, I need to do this. And then your phone is ringing. Messages are coming in and so on. Before you know it, it is 1130 Oh, my goodness. And I have to wake up 6.30 in the morning. And then you are thinking, how long, how, how much time will you then have at your hand to spend time in prayers? But now we have the opportunity to come together. i tell you something. The one and a half hours that we come here to spend every day in prayers, if there was no prayer meeting, you, there will be something that will occupy you for those one and a half hours at home. And you'll be surprised that that thing that will occupy you will not be prayer. Sure. Yeah. Elijah spent time in prayer until the answer came. In Genesis chapter 32, from verse 21 to verse 28, time would not allow us to read that, but you may just note it down. Genesis chapter 32, from verse 21 to verse 28. That was Jacob in Jabbok. Jacob had run away from home. Now it was time for him to go back home. And then he remembered the evil that he left behind at home, what he did to his brother. So he needed to appease Esau, his brother. What did he do? He sent gifts ahead of him. Go and give him these gifts. And then I guess suddenly he remembered the type of brother he had. This gift will not appease Esau. <laughs> that at some point, he divided his company into two, put some in the front and some behind. If he solves, decides to fight, by the time he kills the first um, company, um, before he gets to the second company, hopefully he will be satisfied. But again, he realized that probably was not going to be enough. And then at this point, he sent his wife and children ahead. He said, go. And he, he, he alone remained at Jabbok with the Lord. The Bible tells us there, Jacob wrestled with the Lord. And he prevailed. Jacob spent time in prayer. You know, a time is coming uh, when you, if you are really serious about praying. When prayers are conducted and you are asked to come on your knees to pray, you are not even bothered how many people are on the altar. You are looking for a space to squeeze yourself in. You, you just want to be alone with the Lord. You want to cry to God and pray until something happens. You don't mind if, if it is 9 o'clock, the meet, prayer meeting ends at 9 or 9.30, and people are already going, you are hearing steps. When you know that you still have issues to resolve with the Lord, you tarry further on your knees. You need to dig a little deeper to receive from the Lord. Jacob wrestled until the man asked him, what is your name? Because Jacob wouldn't let him go. It was morning, 
He was an angel. And he didn't want to be seen by people when they woke up. So he said, let me go. Jacob said, I won't let you go until you bless me. And the man said, okay, what is your name? He said, my name is Jacob. You shall no longer be called Jacob. Amen. That was where God changed his name from Jacob to Israel. You know God can change your story. They may say, look, medically you have been examined and a conclusion has been drawn. And they've they've just told you, sorry, there is nothing you can do to it. I'm sorry to be personal. I will give you an example. All of you will know um, before now that I had a bump here on my forehead. As a matter of fact, there are two of us that look alike in this church, and people oftentimes mistake us for um, each other. And somebody had walked up to me before and started speaking ethic to me, thinking I was Braukwe. And I said, no, I'm not Braukwe. I am Francis. He said, oh, he said, so you look so much alike. I said, okay, next time, look out for the bomb. That Francis is the one that has a bomb. That was me. At some point, I felt I needed to take this out. So I got an appointment, went to the hospital. As soon as I walked in, the lady looked at me straight, yes, sir, how can I help you? I said, yes, it's this bomb. Say, I'm sorry, sir. That is a trademark you have to live with for the rest of your life. There is nothing we can do about it. And I said, thank you. I think the period that um, lady doctor spent with me that day, probably maximum would have been like a minute or a minute and a half. And she dismissed me from her office. And I felt, well, it's, it's a trademark I have to live with for the rest of my life. Until, at some point, God put it in my mind again to raise it with my GP. And I raised it, and he said, yeah, that is a solution. And then he referred me. Last year, I got that bump removed. The point I'm trying to make that I'm saying to you is, don't believe every conclusion that has been drawn concerning you. It could even be your parents that will say, oh, that so and so and so and so happened when we had you. Yeah, yeah that thing on you, it, that's the way it has to be. Has God said so? If God didn't say it, take it to God Amen. in prayers. Amen. And God can change your history. Amen. In Luke chapter 11, from verse 5 to verse 8, Jesus illustrated importunity in prayers. When he said that a man suddenly had a visitor in the night, and he had no food to entertain the visitor, so he went to knock the doors of his friend and said, I have, I have a visitor and I need to, I haven't got anything. The friend said, I'm already in bed with my wife and children. Sorry, don't disturb me. But that man would not take no for an answer. He kept on knocking and persisting. Jesus said, I tell you that his friend will rise up and give him what he needs, not because they are friends, but because of his importunity in prayers. It, that is not to say that God does not hear at once when we pray. But you see, oftentimes, he wants to draw us closer unto himself. Yeah. God loves our fellowship. Yeah. The Bible says, ask until your joy is full. Yeah. That is the Bible. The, Jesus also added that our Father in heaven knows what we need. Yeah. But it, it, are you not surprised then that if God knows what we need, he still wants us to pray and ask him, then there must be a reason why God wants us to ask. Some years back, when my daughter was still in secondary school, um, we went to the shopping complex in Bromley, and she um, picked a bag and said she needed that bag for her school. A very small bag that wouldn't even contain her books, but very expensive. And I said, no, you don't need this. Because this won't even carry, it won't, it won't contain your books. Uh, but apparently because that was the fashion in the school. That was what our friends were using. If she will carry something different, they will probably bully her. So she needed that bag. And I said, I'm sorry, I'm not buying this bag. This is too expensive and unreasonable. So we walked out of the store. And then she started crying. And you know, I love her much. So I just said, come on, my dear. Is it because of that bag? Let's go back and buy it. And I bought it for her. And then she stopped crying. That is a parent to a child. How much more our father who is in heaven, who created us in his own image, he wouldn't let us cry in vain. God wouldn't let those tears run in vain. 
He knows what we need, and he will do it as we seek his face. But let us learn to importune in prayers. Jesus, in the Garden of Gethsemane, you know Jesus prayed there. Three times. The first time, he went to God. Ah, if it were possible, please take this cup away from me. That is found in Matthew chapter 26 from verse 40 to verse 45. And then he went to meet the disciples. Ah, you guys are sleeping. You know, it is he that wears the shoe that feels the pain. Those disciples could sleep, but Jesus Christ knew what, what was lying ahead of him. Jesus Christ is God, but yet he spent time in prayers. The first time, he went back again. He prayed the same prayer, went back again the third time. And then when he got the victory, he came back and said, sleep on now. Victory won. Job done. Let us now go. Let Judas come with all his, um, um, his companions. No fear anymore. I'm prepared to go to the cross now. I will do it on your behalf. Jesus won that battle on his knees. We have that opportunity this January. Don't let anything hold you back. Come and spend one and just one and a half hours every day with the Lord. And the, the one and a half hours you spend daily can make a lasting change in your life that you will reap the reward till eternity, as I said earlier on. I heard one of our um, veterans of old who, who has gone for his reward in heaven now. Um, I think I actually think I heard him over the tape. Um, I listened to his message. He said, this, he was directing his speech to the young people. He said, Apostle Faith Youths, pray that you may not pray. Pray that you may not pray. You know, when, if you pray now, <laughs> that time is coming. When you, would need, you wouldn't need to cry, to spend much time in prayers before you just reap. Because you have banned it, and God will be giving you the reward. I don't know of a farmer that enjoys going to the farm every day as much as he does at the time of harvest. The time of harvest is a time of great joy and rejoicing for any farmer. That, oh yes, all my toiling, all my suffering, all my self-denial, now I can see that it's all blossoming. It is now time to harvest. Yes, that is a time of joy. When we're sowing now, now that we're having to struggle to come in um, every day to pray, and God knows, God understands what we are going through, if we are able to endure and go through all the pains and the aches and sow now properly, the time is coming when we will sit back and we'll be reaping. Amen. Where I grew up, there was nothing, and actually, I still think, even up to now, there is no pipe bone water where I was born. So even if I go now, that I'm, not, I'm probably going to drink from the well, or if I buy um, bottled water. Now, those days, we were always looking out for the rain. Anytime it was, um, the clouds were gathering to rain, we will be gathering our containers. We'll be gathering our containers. The moment it started raining, you are positioning your containers where rain water will collect into it. And when it did, we will have water, that water that will last us for, a for some time. Mm -hmm. So that we wouldn't have to struggle to go to the stream to fetch water. You know, now is the time that it's raining. Mm -hmm. You need as many containers yeah. as you can get so that you can collect rain water. Yeah. And when the time comes, you will just send the child, go there and bring some water. Go there and draw water. You wouldn't have to send that child or you yourself having to trek all the way to the bush to get water to drink. Now is the time to sow so that when the time comes, we can reap. Pray, always pray. One of our songs says. In rounding up, I want us to turn to Psalm 126. Psalm 126, and I'm going to read from verse 1 to the end. Psalm 126, from verse 1 to the end. Say, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Amen. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, Amen. and our tongue with singing. Amen. 
then said they among the heathen, the Lord has done great things for them. Amen. The Lord has done great things for us, Amen. whereof we are glad. Amen. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, Amen. as the streams in the south. Amen. They that sow in tears Amen. shall reap in joy. Amen. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. I invite you to the altars of prayers. God bless you. Try to pray. Amen. This is the rainy season yes. of your blessing. Yes. Help us to claim it Amen. in prayer Amen. for salvation, Amen. for sanctification, Amen. for the Holy Spirit baptism, Amen. for reanointing, Amen. for abundant blessing, Amen. for all captivities to be returned, Amen. for all that we have lost to be recovered. Help us to pray. Pray with us now. And help us to pray through. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.